Hey, what up? Uh, Auto hotkeys and Pro Tools. Bit of scripting for Windows, for idiots. Buy an idiot. That's me. Uh, got some uh, got some nice tunes rocking in the background there. All the music in this is from my friends at Sound Ideas and their uh, free library they gave me, my peeps. Uh, I'll preface this by saying I know bugger all. I'm not a coder. I'm a lover, not a coder. And uh, I've, I've faked my way through it. This came out of a conversation about not being able to use Soundflow on Windows and uh, maybe using an Elgato Stream Deck and how that could benefit from having some programming and scripting in auto hotkeys. I've looked at it before and I've always just found it off-putting because, you know, when I look at it, my brain just starts to get hot. But uh, I decided I'll, I'll dive in and have a bit of a crack. I've done a bit of digging around the net. There's some great forums at autohotkey.com. And I found a thread there talking about Pro Tools and I managed to cobble together some scripts, basically borrowing pieces from other people's scripts that they post up on there. And they're all really great, they're really helpful. So I thought I'd just talk you through a few things. As far as installing, downloading AutoHotKey and running it, look, I'll, I'll, I'll let you Google that. That's not what this is about. It's just about the basics of, of the basic one, basic script structure that you can then use for a whole bunch of functions. I use them mainly for calling up noise reduction and audio repair stuff for dialogue editing, mainly um, RX10. A few other functions I like too, uh, and I will get into it more. But this is all new to me. This is actually my first go at it, so I'm running about oh, 12 functions at the moment. I'm, I may add to it, I may not. So I'll talk you through some of the stuff I've got happening. This is all just one script, one AHK file that's pulling up a bunch of different functions. Let's look at this first line here. This is basically just a condition that's telling it to only only work when the Pro Tools window is active. I didn't have that in originally and I've set up all mine to work with the numerical buttons. One, two, three, blah, blah. This plus sign is the modifier, that's shift. If you go to Auto Hotkey and have a look, you can there's a bunch of different symbols for different modifiers, like hash is the window key. So if this was hash three, double colon, uh, it would be windows key plus three that triggers this function. I've only done them with shift and numbers because I, I can hold shift down with my little finger, reach all the number pads, number keys, and keep my right hand on my trackball when I'm dialogue editing, and it, it's a really fast flow for me. So when I didn't have this line in at the head, if I went to my email and sent an email to someone and because I was really excited, I wanted to put seven exclamation marks in it, like everyone does now, it, the key wouldn't work. So I did a bit of Googling around and found someone saying, look, do this, put this line in, and uh, that's the identifier. XE Pro Tools XE, there's a few different ways you can identify it, but they said use the app XE file because other apps won't have the same name. So that made it easy to do. So I whacked that in the top and that stopped the issue. Now when I have Pro Tools active in the script running, click on my email and send an excited email and all the number keys work normally. So that was good, yeah. We've got a storm coming in, so you might hear a bit of thunder now and then. I can hear rain starting. Ooh -hoo. So let's have a look at the basic script. This basic chunk here is what I got from cobbling it together out of a couple of people's scripts. And there's two versions of it, but I'll talk you through the, this one because this is the main one, right? plus one, as I mentioned, so plus is shift. So shift one is what triggers this. Winmen 
select item. So that's telling it to select a menu item. The app is Pro Tools. I don't know why there's two commas here, but you need them. Without them, it doesn't work. That's telling it to go to, I'll just bring up Pro Tools. It's telling it to go to these menus up here. Audio Suite. It's telling it to click that. Noise Reduction. RX10 mouth to click, which I use a lot. Um, some of the talent I work with are a bit, and this just gets rid of all that. Let's bring that up so we can have a look at it. I'm happy to just use the default. All these are based on using the default setup. Now, some people will use a search image command in here. You might see that in some scripts that you've looked at. Uh, I found another guy who made a suggestion in, in one of the threads to use this section of code and he's used X and Y coordinate, mouse coordinates for the button. If you use a search image, you need to do a, a screen capture of this render button and include that in the same folder as your script. But um, I had trouble with that and then I found this dude's thing and it worked really well. So he's worked out the X and Y coordinates. That's like this button, they're all from the right bottom corner. So it's 25 pixels up and minus 45 pixels. So 45 pixels to the left is about the center of that render button. Control click in that position. Now, I don't, I, as again, I don't understand why, what the NA does, blah, blah, but I know it works. And I just pasted that into all my stuff. Uh, mouse move, previous, X previous Y, well, I think that just returns the mouse to its previous position. Sleep 2000, this is kind of important, this one, depending on what process you're doing. This is telling it to wait for two seconds, the, the milliseconds. And then after that two seconds, if this window exists, did you fly to class? Kill, wing kill, which closes the window. So it'll close this down. If you go into your systems tray and click on the hotkey, there is a little function in there called Window Spy. Uh, bring that up now. That will tell you that what these windows are called. So if I click on, you know, Pro Tools, that's Digi App Wind Class. Uh, if I click on this one, Digi Floater Class, that's what class of window that is. It's a bit generic, but it works. So that's just in these brackets is identifying what window you want to kill. You could kill just your active window by having just a capital A in those brackets instead. I tried that and it shut down Pro Tools totally. That must be the active window. So don't do that. Uh, Cause if you do that, you're going to have a bad time. Go with this. Now there's there's two types of processes. One you want to come up, process and shut, like deep click, like deep plosive. Um, some you want to stay open as well, but I have to click. I'm pretty happy to just have it come up, do its thing and shut. So if I hit shift one now and use and watch the Pro Tools section, it's open, it's done its thing, it's closed. That's great for that sort of thing. If I use something like, say, dclip, I want to actually change the functions because I don't want it to just work on the default. That's shift three down over here. If I hit shift three, that'll come up. It's, it defaults to low quality and minus one. I, I want to mess with the settings when I'm trying to fix like one distorted syllable of dialogue. So I haven't set that to kill the window, right? That just opens it up. That's all it does. Going further back, this very top one, this is the, I think it's called a Cedilla, to the left of number one. If I click that, that opens it up. Ooh, windy. And sends it to RX Connect. So click that now. There you go. Sent it to RX. RX is opening. And there's the file in RX Connect. Uh, that needed a different coordinate to click. So I'll just bring up Windows Spy again. Be 
because that has mouse coordinates. Uh, here. So remember in my basic one that was clicking the render, and the render button's in the same position on every RX plugin, right? Probably most audio suite plugins. That was minus 25, minus 45. So all I did was have a look at the mouse coordinate here, which was 436, and moved across to 248. Well, it's about 180, 170, something like that. The, the Y coordinate, which is vertical, stays the same because they're in the same position. It's just further to the left. I, I worked it out to be 170-ish, so I just added 170 to this and made it 215. And it worked. Bugger me. So that just opens it up and sends it. As I mentioned, some of them, like D-Hum, again, I've got no, no window kill on that because I want to mess with the settings. D-Click, yeah, I want that to go quick. A couple of these, like D-Crackle and D-Rustle, they, they go really slow. So I've decided not to kill the window on those because I want to mess with them a little bit. And you'd have to probably set it at four seconds, maybe even five seconds, like they're really slow. And what was happening at two seconds uh, let me open up. Let's open up D Russell at Shift 7. Oh, you can't actually see my process window, but it's going, it's going. Oh, that's pretty quick. But what was happening at two seconds before it had finished processing the clip, it was killing the window. And for some reason, it was killing Pro Tools totally. There's going to be a reason for that that some coder dude will know. I don't. So I've decided to leave some of those. And there's other ones like ambience match that obviously I don't I don't want it to just quickly process. I want to mess with them, but it calls it up, saves me going through all these menus up here. I just hit one button and I'm away. Um, reverse, you know. Uh, so you can use other ones, you know, I've got shift zero as reverse. And that brings it up, reverses it, closes the window again. So that's a quick one. That's a slightly different, you can see here, audio suite, other, reverse. So all I've done is instead of going into noise reduction up here, I've gone into other, reverse. And you could go to anything, any menu you can find. You know, you can go to the view menu, you could go to the edit menu, you could go to the clip. But a lot of these particular menus have shortcuts already. So maybe there's no benefit, maybe there is for you. I mean, that's, a, that's an individual thing for everyone to work out themselves. I have added one, even though it's Control-Alt-B for bounce mix, I've added one to F5 because I don't use the last, I only use the first four F buttons for swapping my grid modes. And that brings up the bounce menu. I've also, F6 brings up clip line. I don't normally work with a clip line, but occasionally I like to look at it. So, you know, rather than going through, uh, I think it's clip, uh, clip gain line, you know, all that stuff saves you a couple of seconds, but across a day of editing dialogue, that can save you an awful lot of time and more importantly, save your sanity. An easy way to deal with all this stuff when you're trying it out or editing it or whatever, I actually, you know, find the script. So here's my main script. Right click and choose edit script and it opens it up in uh, Notepad. It's basically just a text file with a different extension. So I keep that open and have Pro Tools open Adjust my scripts, all right? Make all your adjustments, click save. And then when you go back to where your script is, here it is, right click it and click on run script again and you'll get this little window. There's an older instance is running, replace it with this one. So basically you're just updating the script while it's running. 
click yes. So now any changes you've made are now current and they're running. They're running right now. That's a really quick way to be able to check stuff, try changes, check stuff, unless you make lots of changes that shut down Pro Tools like I did. <laughs> but we won't go into that. So I think that's really most of what I've, I've learned so far. I've spent an afternoon having a crack at it. I'll probably go further with it, but for now, yeah. I hope that helps someone, somewhere, somehow, sometime. All the best. <laughs> <laughs>